Hey, what's up, family? This your fellow servant, Maurice Woods, and welcome to today's Fasting Devotional. I hope all is well with you out there, and I'm so honored to dig in today's topic. What did Jesus say about fasting? So without further ado, let's get into the scriptures. Join me at Mark chapter 2, verse 18 through 19. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they put on a sad and dismal face like actors, discoloring their faces with ashes or dirt so that their fasting may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their full reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head as you normally would to groom your hair and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So just to start off, we see the scriptures are signifying and put in an emphasis on when. And this is what steps sticks out to me. I mean, we can dig into this and break this down so many ways. And I'm sure many of you would love to do that. But just let's just look at this simple point. Look at the first verse. It says, and whenever you are fasting. Right. And then even in the second verse in 17, it says, and when you fast. So I would jump. I would go so far as to say that this is an expectation. The Lord is desiring that this be a routine part of our life. And Jesus, you know, he's our Lord. He's our savior, but he's our blueprint. He's given us an example of what the father expects of us. So just enough for Jesus just to say, hey, this is what you're supposed to do is good enough for us. Right. So let's look into this. And, and whether whether you're saying, you know what? Maurice, this is my first time fasting. I've never done this before, right? Or maybe a little more like my experience. Person like myself, I went from fasting diligently every single week. And then it kind of slipped and went down to about once a month. And then I found myself just fasting every now and then, depending on the circumstance. Maybe when I was in some trouble, or I really needed to hear from the Lord. And that's okay. But that's not the standard that the Lord is trying to display for us here today. What he's showing us here today is that this is supposed to be a regular routine part of our life. So let us together allow this fast at the top of the new year to be the beginning of a lifestyle of fasting and next level obedience to our father. Now, as we're looking into Jesus and what he has to say about fasting, let's continue on in the book of Mark and let's go to chapter nine. We're going to read verses 17, 18, and 25 through 29. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus, he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So we see here, family, once again, as we read a little earlier in chapter two, we seen that Jesus this is what he said he expected when you do this. This was somewhat just emphasizing, like I said, it's good enough for us just to do what Jesus said just because he said it. But we have a good, good father. And he never, the word, this is what I love about the word. It's never just, just do it because I say it, right? I know some of us were raised like that and some of us are being worked out of that now, right? And I know I've done it, hey, because I said so, that's why, right? But that's not our father. He wants us to understand. And I believe right here, we get a glimpse into some benefits. We're gonna talk about several benefits that you actually receive from fasting. And we see that the son, and, and there was a problem. There was a great issue that was at hand. 
And, and not just the son was affected, but with any problem, with any sin issue, with any sickness, with any problem in life, usually it affects not only the person who has it, but everyone around them. So if you're being affected by something, if you're, you're, you're in, matter of fact, let me not say if, we've all been there, right? And we see that this man had a son who was struggling and had been struggling for many years. And whether it was since he was a child until present or whether it was just that week, I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this much, wherever you're at, whether you're that person that's struggling or you're that person that's struggling because of somebody else who's oppressed, right? His son was oppressed. And that we know, we know this much, that that devil was physically trying to take him out, was literally drowning him, throwing him through the fire, was trying to kill him. And even more so, this man, he needed direction. He was looking for an answer. He came to the disciples for the direction that he needed. He said, man, my son, he's been oppressed. He's, he's possessed. He needs help. And the disciples, they had no clarity on what to do. They tried. We're talking about men of God. They walked with Jesus. The power of God was flowing through them. But for some reason, this issue they weren't able to solve. But what happened? Our father, he's a good, good father. And he gave us the example here. He not only emphasized back to the point where I said earlier, where he said, this is what you should do. This is just when you do this, right? This is just, this is a lifestyle. But he's saying now, this is why. This is why. And we know that Jesus didn't go run and pray and fast and then come back and then deal with it. And, and we see what happened. The disciples had a problem come to them randomly. It was just, it was out of nowhere. And problems will pop up on us out of nowhere sometimes, family. And whether they're just popping up on you or they've been there, we need clarity and direction on how to address these things. And this is what Jesus did. He emphasized on the lifestyle. Jesus, we know before this, he was walking in prayer and in lifestyle of fasting. This is something he did on a normal. This was not just what he did. It was actually who he was. And so as he not only shows us in the scripture that this is what we're supposed to do as because he's not just because he said so, but he's also saying this is why this is why he has us do nothing. He doesn't waste any time or any word. And he emphasized on these three benefits, family. Pay attention to these because I know we all need them. And you see that the men of God needed them. The son needed them. And also even the father. First benefit for liberation. Now, the word for liberation is freedom. When you feel oppressed, bound or hassled by some sin or problem, fasting is a powerful weapon in your spiritual arsenal. Saying no to our physical appetites helps us say no to the temptations that may hassle us. So we see here, not only was freedom enacted because the young man, when Jesus cast that, that dumb and that mute spirit out of him, he was liberated. He was set free, right? But we also see that point two is he received direction. There was direction. We find examples both in the Old Testament books of Ezra, Nehemiah, the life of Jesus, and in the books of, the book of Acts. We see that when people desire to know God's will or direction, they fasted. And we see here, look at the disciples. They, the, 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 the father, the father was coming. He didn't know what to do. His son didn't know what to do. The disciples, they, they didn't know what to do. And Jesus was walking in this lifestyle. And he said, hey, there's some breakthroughs that you can't even get unless you have this lifestyle, this lifestyle of prayer and fasting. And we see here that they received clear direction. The disciples got the direction that they needed so that they could actually allow the Father flow through them and that that liberation would be manifested not only in their lives, but in the lives of those who need God the most at that moment. And then point number three benefit, it, well, let's just make it a little more simpler, to think clearly. Physiologists tell us, right? You know, I'm gonna give you something basic, right? Right, just something simple, like even the world, even scientists know this, right? They say that there, it says that when there is no food in the stomach, there is greater blood flow to the brain. Therefore, we can think clearer when not digesting burgers and fries, right? <laughs> Once we overcome, you know, the first pains from the, the, the hunger, our thinking process are more focused and clearer than ever, family. So as we close today, 
You say, what did I learn? What did I get out of this? Well, a couple of things. One, that fasting is an expectation. It is, it is it's a normal part of, of a believer's life. Every single one of us should be practicing and living a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Time where we say no to the appetites of our flesh and we say yes to the things of God that he may increase in us. And we see that the benefits, just some of the few benefits that we get, we not only get a flow of blood flowing through us from our heart to our brain that help us think clearly. How many of us need to think clearly? Come on now. Come on. I speak clarity over you, right? You fasting. You're doing good. You're, you, this is new beginnings for you. This is breakthrough. And some of us are just coming back, right? So now you're able to think clearly and you can understand what's being spoken to you in this scripture. And also we see that we receive direction. What are you desiring insight for? What kind of direction? We all need direction. I need a direction just to get from here to there, from my house to this building to do this recording. We all need direction and especially for the brokenness and the hurt and the pain, the sin issues, the problems, whether are present in our own lives or in somebody else's. We need direction on how to address those things so that we can get the freedom that the father gave his life for us to have. And lastly, for liberation, for liberation, to be free free from those problems, to be free from the bondage, from the sin that would try to hold us back, from the things that would try to keep us confined to this world and the ways of it. Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly, family. So as we end today's fasting devotional, I just thank the Father for this time with you. And I pray that you be enriched and that you abound and increase in the knowledge and the wisdom of his word. God bless you.